I chose the top 20 language learning apps of all time and now we're gonna see which ones are the best and which ones are the worst. I have personally used all of these apps and almost all of them I've used for at least a period of two to three months. There's only two that I have barely used. What I have to say is that I actually have experience with all of these apps. And this rating is based on my opinion and my personal experience. So feel free to disagree with me in the comments. I am actually expecting it. I will also leave links in the description to each of the apps in question so you can give them a try and judge them on your own. Closemaster is a really good app. I love that it is for intermediate learners. It is super helpful if you are in the B levels or even an upper beginner. It is easy to use. It has a bunch of languages, like so many. So there's something for everyone there. I will have it as an A. So only because I don't think it's the best out there. And I have found that while I learn a lot with it, it's not the best at explaining why things happen. And sometimes we need a little bit of explanation. On the other side, we have Lingvist which as an app and as a method is very similar to Closemaster, but I think it's actually better than it. The problem with Lingvist is that they don't have a lot of languages. In fact, let's see how many languages they have. So they have British English, American English, French, Russian, German, Spanish, Latin American Spanish, and Brazilian Portuguese, or Portuguese. And compared to Closemaster, Closemaster is completely free, and Lingvist is a paid app. But as an app and as a method, I think it's superior. Now I have a little bit more of a content app or a fun app or a lazy learning app. Um, and it's Link by Steve Kaufman. And you know I love Link. I really do. I think it's, again, a great resource for intermediate learners. But even if you're a beginner, I've used some of their courses and I learned so much with it. And I also love that they have a... Chrome extension, link, 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 where will I put it? But is it the best? Yeah, yeah, it is sub five. It is sub five, I'm gonna put it in S. <laughs> now let's go with Bilingwap. Bling app or Bilingwap, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's an app with stories. It has a free version, but it's very limited and it has a paid version. So here's the thing with Bilingwap. I don't think it is a bad app. I just don't think it is the best. I think this makes for a perfect B because it's just right there, you know, it's just like, okay, it's, maybe it's even a C because whenever I've used it, I've never learned anything. Maybe it's because I'm not very interested in their stories, although I know it helps a lot of people. I've, I'm feeling a C right now. If, if I'm, maybe I'll change it later, but I'm feeling it's, it's, it's like, okay, it's not bad, you know, it's like, they're worse, I think. Then we have... Anki. Anki is a flashcard app and it's very, very popular. It has, I think, in my opinion, one of the best space repetition systems. My problem with Anki is that it is ugly. <laughs> this really is my problem. And it relies a lot on you creating your own flashcards. I don't like to create my own flashcards. I know that it's helpful. I've done it in the past many times. I used to do it with Anki, but I found that I spend more time creating my flashcards and actually use them. So I started using other people's flashcards. So for that, Anki is a B for me because it does have a great system, it does have a great method, but it's just a little too complicated for me. Quizlet is very similar, although it's prettier. The problem with Quizlet, however, is that their space repetition system is not so good. What I do like about Quizlet is that I have taken a few courses in other languages and the teachers make really pretty and good decks uh, on Quizlet. So, and whenever I use Quizlet and Anki, but most of Quizlet because it's the one I've used the most, I've learn so much. So just because Quizlet is a little bit more inviting to me, I will have it to be an A. Okay, so I have innovative languages. And this is your classic Dutch pod 101, French pod 101. You know what I'm talking about. They have an app and they have paid subscription. You can also get the free podcast and I don't like it. I only use the intermediate levels of it and I think it's not good. It's not fun to me. So for me, this is an, an easy C. Because it's not about resource, because it's not like the content is bad, it's just the way they present it. I don't enjoy it, so... Then we have High Native, 
And Hi Native is an app that helps you ask questions to people regarding language learning or culture, and you get answers and get corrections. So it's great for corrections. Hi Native is one of my favorite apps ever. I don't use it enough. I think that's the thing. I don't feel invited to use it as much. And I just wish I could use it more. I think a lot of other apps have copied. <laughs> Hi Native. I like italki has a community now that is very similar to Hi Native. Buzu also has a community less similar but it's also like based on Hi Native Tandem and Hello Talk also added communities. So I think that Hi Native is the OG and still the best in my opinion. So I'm just gonna have Hi Native be an A because I really really like it. As for language exchange apps I don't love language exchange apps and I have here Tandem and Hello Talk. I used to use this obsessively for years. I love it so much but it became very creepy and <laughs> fall in and out of love with these apps. So out of Tandem and Hello Talk I prefer Tandem. I feel it's a little bit more secure. I like the interface a little bit more and I find it to be more fun. So Tandem goes... It's an A for me. And Hello Talk on the other hand is not a bad resource. It's a C for me, just because I don't feel it's so safe to use. And it's nothing wrong with Hello Talk. Actually, it's a B. I think it's a, it's okay. Like the platform itself, it's good, and the features they have are really good. I just don't like the community there, which I think it's a huge part of what Hello Talk is. I have some. Uh, audio courses and here is Pimsleur. Pimsleur, if you don't know, is a language learning app that I absolutely love. It has like a program that you can buy for like $100 but then you can also get the app and you pay like $20 a month so that's a more flexible way of um, getting Pimsleur. What I love about Pimsleur is that it sticks in your brain and it helps so much with fluency. Like before I used Pimsleur, I used to try to study German and I just couldn't, like, it, it was hard for me to speak. And after starting using Pimsleur, and I still haven't finished it, um, I just felt like I could make sentences and feel more confident when I spoke. And it just helped with that uh, spoken fluency. My only issue with Pimsleur is that it is 30 minutes a lesson, and I struggle so much to just give myself 30 minutes, but it's hard for me to focus with it. Um, however, as for the content, I think this is one of the most have apps. They, they have a lot of languages, at least they don't have every language, but I, I just love it so much. An app that, this is one of the two apps that I have not used for a long time, Language Transfer. And I've only listened to a couple lessons and in French. And it's good. It's fun. It's entertaining. It gives me coffee break vibes. You know, like uh, coffee break Italian, coffee break German. It gives me those vibes. Um, it's entirely free. It is an audio course and the lessons are not too long. They think they're about 15 minutes or less. I gotta say, I like it. I really like it. And I think it goes right there uh, with all the good ones. I actually think that Lingvist will go here and maybe Close Master will go here. Yeah, I feel that a little bit more because I don't feel like, I feel like Lingvist is really good but I don't feel it's like Link or Pimps or Language Transfer good. And then if Lingvist is here, Close Master and Lingvist are not equally to me because Lingvist offers so much more instruction and information so um, this is just what I'm feeling. We have italki, and I, I don't even have to think it. I think italki is one of the best platforms for language learners out there, especially since they introduce a community, which is like high native vibes. Um, uh, italki is one of the best. You get to have lessons at your own time. This is not a sponsor by italki, by the way, or any of these apps. <laughs> it's not a sponsor by anything. I just love italki so much. I think it is a great platform to learn languages. And definitely, yeah, I'm a, I do agree that it's top five for sure. Then we have drops. You're gonna get upset with me, but I hate drops. And I used to use it all the time. I used it for at least, they had like 90 day drops challenge. So I used it for at least 90 days, but it's so useless. And I didn't learn anything with it. They have like these images that don't, I don't understand them. So to me, drops is just a waste of time. And I used it for a long time and I did not learn anything. And I hated that they had a lesson about like knots, like, cashew nuts and like, um, I don't know, nuts. <laughs> Maybe I need to do lessons. I do know nuts, wait, cashew nut, just nuts, almonds and like 
you know what I'm talking about. It was pointless to me. I didn't need that vocabulary. Like, and even if, like, you live in the country, I live in countries where my native language or languages as I speak are not, you know, in the supermarket. You don't need to know these words. You just go to the supermarket and find it. You don't need to learn the word. Like, it's just pointless to learn, like, cashew nuts. I'm so worked up about it. I don't know why. I just hate learning useless vocabulary. Then we have Memrise. Ooh, Memrise. What I love about Memrise is some of their courses have these fun videos of people doing the things and, and acting the phrase they're saying. These are native speakers. And those videos are so good. They're still like embedded in my brain. So I will just go for an A or an S because of how natural it feels to learn this vocabulary. Um, in some courses, they don't have the same type of course for every language. It is like if you mix the natural context of all these apps, Link, Pimsleur, and Language Transfer, and you mix it with like Anki or Quizlet. It's kind of that vibe. Now, <laughs> Rosetta Stone, it's an app that I have not personally used. This is like an app that I have not used for many months. However, my boyfriend got it for Dutch when we moved to the Netherlands his old company of Red. It was so bad, it made Duolingo feel like the best app in the world. It was really that bad. And I don't know if it was only the Dutch course or if it's not my style of learning or my boyfriend's style of learning. And maybe I'm not giving it a first chance, but from what I see and the method they use, I, I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Bubble, I used it like maybe like eight years or seven years ago, I don't know. And now I'm using it again for Dutch. And it's really good. It really, really is good. Is it as natural feeling? I, I must clarify this. The reason why I find that apps with more natural language or more natural approach are more helpful than the others is because it transfers very well to real life situations. So this, this thing that educational systems, anything that you're learning must have, and it's called transferability. If what you learn transfer really well to real life situation, for example, if I learn in Pimsleur how to say, where's the bathroom? And then the next day I go out and go to the street and I need to ask where is the bathroom and I can just use it naturally. It means that it transfers really, really well. Of course, transferability is subjective because what is useful for me might not be useful for you. And I completely understand that. What I do enjoy is a good app that tells you vocabulary that sounds natural. So... Babel actually has really natural vocabulary and I know it because I'm doing the Dutch course and I'm doing the, doing the beginner course just to review and all of the words they say, they say it in a very Dutch way, which I am familiar with. So I can really say that it transfers really well. Do I like the method? The method is a little bit textbooky for me. So do I enjoy it as much as I enjoy the others? No, not really. I don't. You know what? Actually, I think Babbel is on the top just because Babbel has a lot of speaking practice too. And that is something that almost all of these have, except for maybe Membrise and Link, but all the others have a lot of speaking practice, right? Based even in, in speaking practice. So I do think that Babbel helps in that way. Buzu has less speaking practice. I think it's equally good. I do not enjoy it. It feels even more textbook like than Babbel, so I don't enjoy all of their exercises. However, when I learn with Busu, it really just stays in my brain, so I really appreciate it. Lingo Deer, I'm conflicted with Lingo Deer because in some cases, Lingo Deers move too fast for me, at least. Maybe I'm not that smart, <laughs> but sometimes when I'm doing like Japanese, I feel like sometimes it jo it goes from like zero to 100. I feel more comfortable more comfortable using sometimes Duolingo for Japanese or for other languages. But the more advanced levels of Lingotier are so good. And also they have a new course called French Accelerated. And it's so good because it's very natural vocabulary. They make you speak. So I think Lingotier is not there yet, but it's getting there. I feel like I'm too good. I'm putting most of them into like the top tiers. Maybe I should be more critical. And then there's Duolingo. I want you to... I want to give you a second to think where I'm going to put Duolingo in the ranking. And you're going to be surprised, actually, I think. Maybe that's giving away too much. Duolingo, for me, it's the perfect middle ground. Yes, 
I think it actually goes well with all the other apps that I, that I have there. Here's the thing with Duolingo. I feel like people are divided. People either love Duolingo and swear by it and have a thousand million days streak. Streak? Streak? I always say this word wrong. Streak? Or they hate it. It's the worst app ever. Don't even dare to use Duolingo. And in my experience, Duolingo, it's weird in the beginning, but it does get better. And to the ling for the languages that they do have the stories, it's the stories are fun, are good, are entertaining. It's a great way to learn with Duolingo. I do like the competition in Duolingo. I think it's fun. And I do like the crown system because it feels like a video game. It has great features, in my opinion, Duolingo. The vocabulary is weird and it doesn't transfer really well to real life. And that's why it's down. If it had more natural and better vocabulary, as it does in normally the latest or the 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 higher levels, the more advanced units throughout the whole course, then I will absolutely love Duolingo and I will actually swear by it. Yeah, but it also likes speaking practice, which I really, really like. Okay, so I feel I was too nice. <laughs> I probably... Would I change anything, actually? Actually, yes. I will put Hello Talk lower and High Native lower as well. And maybe that's just me trying to make it look nice. <laughs> maybe that's just me like wanting this, this symmetry. So let me know what you think about the ranking of these apps. And if you want to try them for yourself, I have some discounts and some free days in the description box down below for some of the apps, not all of them. Um, you can definitely try them out and judge them for yourself. I need to know if I was too nice or if I was too mean with some of these apps and let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. Now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!